Welcome back to another tutorial on Gearsaw Studios. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a harbor. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And first off, the difficulty of this. I mean, yeah, it's going to be pretty tough. You saw the size of it. However, this really comes with a catch. This changes a lot depending on your game mode. I mean, of course, you don't have to deal with resources and, you know, the fact that you can fly in creative, but this one really depends on your ability to use slash fill. If you can do that in creative, well, good job. That's the majority of the tutorial. If you're doing this in survival, it's going to be significantly tougher. Now, we have ourselves the concrete. Pretty much this whole build is going to be concrete. We're going to have accents made of concrete, cranes made of concrete, storage containers made of concrete. Pretty much the only things that aren't are going to be the chains, and then some iron bars as safety rails. Now, for your build location. Right here might look very picturesque and might seem like a very odd location. I mean, I could build so many other things here. But there's something that this location has that the other ones don't. And you probably won't be able to figure it out immediately. For reference, here's what another location might look like. Now teleporting to somewhere else in my world. Well, look at this location. You can see we have coastlines here. I mean, of course, they're really close together, but that's because this world is a complete world edit mess. Well, what's wrong with these coasts here? These look like perfectly serviceable coastlines. The problem is they're not flat. And when they are, they aren't for long or they're too close to something. Right here is copy pasted. That doesn't count. But something like here, sure you can flatten it out, but it still has quite a bit of terraforming to do. You have to be very careful about where you place harbors. Making artificial land like this works really well for something. Considering the amount of dirt you probably need for excavation because harbors are usually near cities, it will probably be your best bet. But occasionally you might find a gem of a coastline that happens to be flat enough for all this. Personally, I think this is, even though it's a very nice location and a little weird to put a harbor, I think this is the best place to put it. From here, make two boxes, and kind of like an L shape almost, where we have something going across here, where my cursor is going, that's our flat part, and then another going across here. And these are for two different parts. We have our main managing stuff here, and then we have our cranes and shipping containers here. And yeah, I know, this is a long clip. But outline those with blocks, and now you have a lot of your build already planned out. Right here, I have the giant outline. You can see a bunch of gray concrete squares with light gray concrete in the middle. One thing of note is the fact that you probably want to connect it fully with the terrain. It doesn't have to be a terribly complex connection. As I've done with the rest of my city, which only has uh, two builds, that being the road and a hotel, you don't have to do anything complex for this. You can see a massive stone brick wall with grass on top suffices. Of course, you want to connect it up with the rest of the city, but since my harbor is completely disconnected, since I don't know how many city builds I'm going to put in here, well, this will have to do. And it's pretty cheap to do that, because here's the thing, with that specific design, it's only dirt and stone, that is if you're mining with silk touch, and if you're doing this build, you probably have enchantments, I mean look at its size. Connect it up with the terrain and do the large stone brick wall, and then we can start moving on to support beams. The designs for them can vary, but I generally recommend going to the edges, maybe extending it down by one, this. And then you will probably want to make it decently large, go all the way down to the ocean floor, and use light gray concrete along the way. Alright, we have ourselves all the grass connected up, large stone walls here and around. See, pretty easy. Then we have these giant columns. These columns are nothing particularly fancy. You can see, I extended this to make it two blocks thick. Then what I did from here is I went in by one, made two blocks down, a pillar of light gray concrete, and then even lower, we have ourselves more gray concrete, which extends all the way down to the seabed. This provides the structural integrity that this build needs, and from afar, 
it looks pretty good. From here, you need to decide where is going to be your containers and where is going to be your cranes. You might want to look at real life reference pictures in order to get an idea of what's more logistical in this situation or whatever situation you have. From here, place down some blocks to designate where you want your cranes. These cranes should be at minimum 15 blocks wide, I'd say. Although, if you have a small port, you might need to go a little smaller. Right here, we have ourselves the first crane. And I'm going to have two different designs. And the tip is up to you. I might leave it blank for the time being. And this crane is going to be for the boats themselves rather than the crates. You can see a bunch of supports going into one rod here that could move back and forth hypothetically. No control room. And... Yeah, pretty simple. You just need to make everything too thick to make it more interesting. It goes back, and then it goes forward, and then we have the tower, X's for support, and then four platforms here. And in order to save yourself some time, especially if you do not have mods, then you might want to use the structure block if you're in creative. And this is a little intimidating at first, but what you want to do is navigate to the save category, you still have it on bedrock, it will have a different interface though. And then, make the relative position 0, 0, 0, and edit these numbers until it reaches the size of your build. And if it does not work, like it's going way over there instead of in the correct direction, then either invert the side, try it from this side, or set the relative position to a negative number to move the box. I'm going to probably make a full tutorial for this someday. Once you edit all the numbers in like this, then you can see that I've selected the whole build. Press the save button, the one in all caps, right here, and then you'll be able to switch to the load function. And this one will allow you to copy paste it much easier. All you need to do is type in the name again, click load, and then you'll have another crane. Do this a few times in order to maximize your efficiency and you only have to build one crane at the end of the day, rather than several. Before moving on, one final change I need to make is removing these X's here on these parts. This rod needs to be able to move back and forth in order to carry the containers. Since usually you can't convince workers to carry a ton of steel at a time, yeah, you usually have to bring these along. Once you have these, then it's time for some of your crates before building one extra vehicle, that being a movable crane. Now, grab a concrete, grab a few for that matter, and now with your concretes, of course, use pretty much as many as you can, you want to build boxes. These boxes don't have to be terribly complicated. In fact, something like this, I'm going to use a little bit of structure gel here in order to speed this up on my end, because of course, I have to make these quite often. Then, extend it a few blocks out, and what do you know, you have a very simple crate. This might not be what you want, you might want to make it a little shorter like this, and you can even include some writing on it. And by writing, I mean some basic concrete. On either side, make it look like it has a logo on it, and what do you know, you have one crate. You're going to need a lot of these. I recommend about 30, or maybe about 10 for each crane. Stack them up. Pretty much the most precarious game of Jenga ever. And then you have yourselves the cranes here. We're going to include more over here as some storage before they would get moved onto something like a road. While building your crates, there is something you might want to note. Notice when I have my two parallel crate piles, there are gaps between them. That's not exactly preferable. And you have three choices here. One. Let them be, maybe light them up to prevent mobs, you know, that would create unnecessary sources of lag and decrease the productivity of nearby mob farms. Then, you could fill them up, or you could simply make your crates clip into each other. Something like this right here, you can see what I mean. It looks fine, and nobody's really going to care about that part. Might as well make some of them clip into each other if you're going to triple stack or double stack them. Since I'm making almost a pyramid shape, you know, like a log, minus the rails, because, you know, these are too big, and hold still on their own, you get the idea here. Essentially, you want to make them clip into each other or fill them up. 
That way, you solve any mob problems and make it easier to build on yourself. I also recommend doing the text last. Since the thing is about the text, you have to bring out a new color and you don't want to be constantly switching your hotbar. Right here, we have our crates. And you can see both sides are textured. And for the most part, I hide the little detail how some of them are overlapping. The only part that's really noticeable is this one, but this one can also be hidden with the fact that both of these share the same logo colors. Whether you want them to be similar colors or more graffiti-like, how I've chosen, is up to you. But essentially, I recommend not leaving them bare. With that, now it's time for the rest of the build. You'll need more cranes. These ones, you might want to have different colors to differentiate them. Maybe a slightly different size, maybe taller, shorter, well, a bunch of different dimensions you can change, but you need more crates. And for my purposes, I'm probably going to copy paste these and swap the colors around since it's about to upload and I don't want to miss schedule, but you get the idea. You want to build these boxes, the length can vary, and this should take up most of your harbor, considering, well, these are crates, and this is what a harbor is for, moving crates. Here, you can see I added more crates using different patterns by using terracotta, and then I have a new crane. First off with the crates, the surface is a bit more bumpy, and inevitably if all the crates are the same size, you're not going to fit it all together. This isn't Tetris, because of course you need to bury them a little. In order to fix this, you can add small pieces of terracotta in order to make it look like that there are more crates down there even if it doesn't make logical sense. Next up, about the crane. I recommend looking up a design online. Pretty simple to do that, and you might find something more interesting than basic red cranes. I found a cool looking red sandstone one, so I took a lot of inspiration from it. Maybe even incorporate buttons like theirs did. At the bottom, incorporate a computer. This is actually an armor stand with a chainmail helmet. You can do this by using concrete powder and hardening it on top of the armor stand. From here, magnet, and then this build seems to be done. But of course, there's a little bit more to do. We need lighting. I recommend adding some basic lighting, whether it be frog lights, sea lanterns, or end rods throughout this. And then, I also recommend some railings. I like to use glass, and specifically glass panes. Like this. They don't have to be anything too complicated. Might want to add some concrete like this, copy-paste those. What do you know? You have some railing, extra detail, and your port will be finished if you have all the lighting you need. Now, with the lighting pretty much everywhere except here because it would be mismatched due to an even number of blocks, this build is complete. To fill in the extra final details here and there, I recommend placing more crates. Make sure to mirror their fronts and backs so that way you have proper design. If you want an administrative building for this area, I'm gonna be honest. You probably don't want to do it in this palette considering all of this mainly relegates you to concrete or something that's going to be open air and maybe a little too unformal. I recommend following a tutorial such as my skyscraper, which should be appearing in the top right, or potentially even repurposing my hotel, which is probably actually going to be appearing in the top right instead. But this harbor is completely suitable, has ships if you want them. Of course, that could be a separate tutorial if you guys want it. And yeah, it's an interesting build because all the big things around and all the colors. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Beersaw, out.